In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Oxygen for Java and Rim Objects SDK for Java to build an Android client for the Mega Demo server. Thanks to wire compatibility, this is going to connect from Rim Objects SDK for Java with the Rim Objects SDK for .NET, but I could just easily be using the Rim Objects SDK for Delphi Mega Demo server or any custom server. So since this is Rim Objects SDK for Java, I'm going to go into Visual Studio. I am using Visual Studio 11 beta, but this will work exactly the same in Visual Studio 2010 or the Visual Studio shell that ships with Oxygen for Java. Go ahead and do File, New, Project. We're going to go to Oxygen for Java node and select Android application. There are templates available under the Rim Objects SDK node here. We're going to build an Android application from scratch. We're going to go ahead and uh, give our project a name. Now the two things we need to do so that we can use this as a Rim Objects SDK for Java client application is first add a reference to the Rim Objects SDK Java jar file. Now anytime you're adding a reference to an external jar file that is not already on the Android platform, you need to come in here and set copy local to true. So the Android framework here does not have copy local set to true because it's included on the Android platform. But anything else you add, you need to set copy local to true. And we need to import the Rim Objects SDK service. So we do this by browsing for the Rim Objects RODL file. So this is the mega server RODL file that was used to create the server. And we hit import. And this creates our mega demo library interface file. So this file here contains all of the types and information we need to communicate with the server, specifically the mega demo service proxy. This is the proxy object that has all the methods on it that we would use to communicate with the server. So anytime you call one of these methods, that information gets proxied to the service to produce the results that you want. So now the first thing we need to do is create a variable to hold our instance of the mega demo service proxy. And then we'll go down into the onCreate here and we'll construct an instance of the mega demo service proxy. We're passing in the URI for the server itself. Now the server is running all on my local machine here, but I can't use localhost here because this client will be running in the simulator, not on my desktop. And the simulator has a separate IP address for my desktop. So if you use localhost here, it'll try and talk to the simulator. And the simulator is not running the server. My desktop's running the server. So you have to use the IP address for your desktop or wherever your server happens to be. So this is already wired up here to get the button that's already on the form and setting up a click listener. So we're going to go ahead and go into our on button click handler and add a call to the service. Now you see here this shows all of the methods on the proxy, like echo variant, echo person, echo binary, etc. But we're going to go ahead and stick with the get server time. And now that we have the time from the server, we're going to use a toast to display it to the user. Just real simply here, we're going to just display a string representation of the time to the user. So we've written the code for our application here. There's really just three lines of code that do the work with the service itself. This line is just doing the display to the user. And we need to add something to the manifest. Because this application talks to the, over the network, we need to add a user's permission for internet to the manifest. Now, even though we're not talking to the public internet, anytime you talk over the network, you need to have this permission. So even though this is just talking from the simulator that's running on my desktop to the server that's running on my desktop, so it's staying within the local network, it still needs the internet permission. So that's it, we're done. We're gonna go ahead and run our application here. There's my simulator ready to go. Our application is running here with a nice little click me button. So I click the button. It's going to call the service, get times, get server time, which of course gets proxied to the server and brings the time back to display to the user. There we go. That's how easy it is to create an Android client for Rim Objects SDK for Java.